Hello and welcome everyone to the Mantic Podcast. As always, unfortunately, I'm Matthew, uh, and I'm joined by someone that I never think needs an introduction, but it's it's the old Ronnie Renton. Well, hello, hello, everybody. How are we all doing? Oh. Enjoying lockdown two for you Brits and Europeans. Lockdown two, electric burglary. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Wasn't really ready for a sequel quite that soon. <laughs> no. Yeah. Hollywood likes to push him out, so you know we should have expected it, but yeah, I think uh, it was expected, yeah, surprised. But there we are. It is more more painting time. Getting yeah, ready for when we'll start gaming again. <laughs> and uh, of course, the the word on everyone's lips right now is Armada. Uh, we've been excitedly uh, working on it at the office. I know a few people uh, have been painting there, like like the Road to Kings of War um, yeah. third edition. Um, I haven't, I've already got a backlog, so I wasn't involved with it this time, uh, oh, just probably for the best. That, she, just yeah. because you have a backlog is no reason not to start <laughs> at least five new hobby projects, Matthew. I'm trying to be, I'm trying to be the only person in the world that finishes a project, but I don't think yeah, it's looking you're, likely you're anyway. Yeah. yeah, you're a rocking <laughs> son. No, you don't have lead under the bed by painting everything you've got. Yeah. <laughs> well, I've got I've got stuff from work now that I need to do as well. So it's like, oh god, like I can't even oh, do my personal are you stuff. Anyway, yeah, all these all these free miniatures. Oh, what a shame. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess for anyone that has been living under a rock, um, yeah. Do you want to give no, us? No pun intended. Yeah, I'm that's in a cave for lunch. <laughs> yeah. um... Or just stuck in my room. Um, do you want to give a background on Armada and just why it's the best thing in the world, basically? Best thing ever. Yeah, best thing on the high seas. <laughs> um, obviously, last year, Kings of War, uh, our fantasy setting, Panathor, world developing, just generally, we're excited, you know, about what's happening with Kings of War, and mm. we've, in many ways, I always talked about that. Like, the three, three levels for our game. You've got the board game intro, Dungeon Saga, for example, where. You know, you're probably maybe playing with non-gamers or it's, uh, it's certainly not more gamers. It can be a family game or a yeah. board game game, but a nice way of getting introduced to what we do. Mm. We then have games like Vanguard, which is a skirmish level game, half a dozen figures. It is hobby. It is, you know, plastic and resin. It's about moving miniatures around, but a specific scenario or more narrative driven games. So we're looking at that. And then, of course, we've got Kings of War itself, the big battle game, which is huge, big battles and hundreds and thousands of troops. And the stuff that seems to be best able to kind of get new people to try our games are the 10 figures skirmish level, not too big a commitment. And while people, people that love Kings of War love it, you know, you've got to get yourself ready to be painting 10 units, eight units. Mm. It's a fair undertaking. Once you play Vanguard, you might start then building a regiment and building up. But at the same time, we wanted just more people to, to have a go at one of our games. And so we thought, well, rather than doing a different Vanguard in a different setting, you know, a miniatures game of troopers, let's look at boats. And so I think the charm and the joy of Armada is it's a good, it's a war game. You know, it's a classic tabletop battle game with eight or ten things to paint. And those eight or ten things are like you've not painted in a very long time, if you've ever painted it at all. So a real fun new hobby challenge. Yeah. And and I think that's what's made it so knockout is that, you know, we've all been painting minis all year. We've all been doing lockdown. Then all of a sudden these shits come out. The size of them, they're just beautiful. They're, they're not too small that you lose all the detail and you lose all the character, but they're not so big that each one's going to take you three months to paint. <laughs> and, um, you know, it, it, you've got to paint the rigging and, you know, the it, it, wheels on each cannon. They're mm. a lovely size. And we, you know, we kind of went with that size. We picked it up from Black Seas because they'd got a size that was just, as soon as I saw it, I thought, yeah, you know what? We can work with that. It's the right size. Let's just go. Um, and, 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 and I think just it being so fresh, so new, not too big a commitment to get into it. And a nice couple of fleets to start, a couple more just around the corner. So enough that there's variety straight from the get-go. The fact that people know we'll support it over the years ahead with yeah. new fleets. Um, we've you know, got a book coming out at the same time. So just all around, I think the, the thing that really got it was everyone was ready for something new. And I think it just ticked that box. Yeah, Not to uh... a bit, but lovely bit of painting. 
Yeah, I'm the I'm the perfect when you say about people starting off in Vanguard and then moving up to Kings of War. That was that's pretty much that was me in a nutshell. So when yep. when I saw the amount of miniatures you do use in in even just like an initial game of Armada, it does uh, tickle that fancy where it's oh actually you know doing four do boats. That. Yeah, I could I yeah. could I, even I could bash that out. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, a couple of you know what you're buying thirty quid and you get your starter fleet. Another third you got your booster fleet. You you well on your way. You know, yeah, you're there or thereabouts. You just need to tweak it then, as you like your play style or whatever else. But two player starter set and a booster. Yeah, you know, for not a lot of money, you're going to get a lot of game and a lot of great modelling time and hobby time and um, something really fun. And you know, I mean, we'll, we'll get on to me in a bit, but I, I was always obviously <laughs> going to do the dwarfs. Of course, <laughs> because we haven't managed to get them uh, through moulding yet because we've been so busy, which we'll talk about again in a second. Mm. Um. I couldn't wait, so I raided the um, cast off and miscast pile, and, and <laughs> got myself an, a, a Basilean fleet. And that's that's what you know, that, that's how approachable it is. I've got yeah. a lot of people saying, "Oh, I'm waiting for the Empire of Dust, or I'm waiting for the Dwarfs," but I'm having the Orcs in the meantime. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm having the Basileans in the meantime, and, and that's what's lovely about it is that you, you know, it's not such a big commitment mm. that you think too long about what you're going to do. I'll get that one, and then yeah. I'll build the other one. Uh, that's good fun um, and each one's so so different or if you but, fancy using more of like a certain type like if you've really been using the the Gur panther or something it's like oh you know what i want another one of them it's not you haven't got to worry about it being 40 miniatures which obviously some people right. yeah, get some out of bed <laughs> and if you build a basilean fleet you, you're not you've not you know when you've done an army you think i'm, I'm kind of done with an army for a while what else mm. can i do Whereas I think you'll build a Basilean fleet. I've, I've, you know, built the one I built. And I'm still like, I bring the dwarfs on when they come. You know? <laughs> I can't wait to get going on my real army. So it's, it's quite nice that it's very digestible yeah. and very satisfying. You know, they go together nicely. There's a bit of modeling, but not tons. You know, they're, they're not fiddly. Four or five parts. Mm. And the connection lines are nice. Um so, yeah, I got, yeah. um, I got, I got some because we're we're going to be bringing out uh, just a few tips and tricks on uh, as assembling them in case you a new to resin or you just want to have a look at it before you before you tackle them. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And, and the pieces are absolutely. I mean, obviously, I'm 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 going to be massively biased because I love the Basilians. Uh, but the uh, the detail on on the on the ships is absolutely gorgeous. Um, yeah. And as I say they are very simple to to assemble um and and dry assemble just to make sure you've got everything right because i know sometimes um with a with other other products um it's like oh i, I don't want to i don't want to break it or like, i need to have a look at something but these, yeah, or, these or it's amazing. a 10 piece bill so you've got to have half yeah. built before you can check the end of it because it's hard yeah to together, and that's just isn't that is it no no not at all resin, you know the resin lovely has the detail mm. but one evening of assembly and you will have your fleet built yeah you know? Depends when you're going to paint it before or after assembly, your choice. But mm. uh, uh, probably a bit of both would be the, the best idea. But um, very quickly, I've got all the parts. Right, that's how I'm going to do it. And, and, and no more than a week for normal painters. Obviously, not yeah. for the, um, <laughs> not the Walshers of this world. The but for of normal nature. painters, you know, a week of painting and assembly, and you will be well, well, well on the way to your, your, your fleet being done. Mm. Um. And obviously, people know us usually as a, a Kickstarter um, person, but this is, is, is it our biggest retail launch or one of the biggest? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we, we've not been a Kickstarter company for a few years, really. Mm. And I think that's, we do do them, but we do them to either help us tool our range or yeah. um, because that's the best medium for a product that's a licensed product, or say, mm. or something like that. But our hobby products are all, you know, Kings of War is... A retail direct product only and, and this has been entirely sold via and, and, and available through our website and our your friendly local gaming stores yeah we were slightly caught out because when i showed it to the salesman they were all a bit sniffy saying oh i can't really understand this and I'm not, I've, I've got kings <laughs> of war and i can't i don't get boats bah, bah, rubbish and um, <laughs> so we kind of ordered what i thought would be six months worth of stock and um, hmm. Because, you know, we ordered all the print, we were getting the casting ready, we had all of our schedules going. And I thought, well, if we do about 60% of it on launch and then the other 40% Jan, Feb, March, um, 
that'll be nice. And then we can see what we could reprint at. You know, we can assess demand and go from there. Uh, yeah. We sold out in 24 hours. Oh, wow, okay. Um, <laughs> everything, and we had to limit. I realised what was happening is I had to limit each market to you know, 20% of the print run yeah. um, each. So so we've, we've actually got orders on now for pre-order. So we've already reordered for January. So there'll be, there'll be restocks. Mm. But of course, all the resin forecasts and all the build forecasts were on 60%. And yeah. now we're at 100%. So we've been double shift casting. We've been casting Saturdays. Everybody in the building is hanging on to their sanity by their fingernails. <laughs> now, after a year of, uh, of lockdowns and COVIDs and everything else, we kind of came back from COVID, mm. got ourselves straight at the end of summer. And then all of a sudden, we've got this colossal iceberg, another little joke, CJ, <laughs> uh, coming towards us at a rate of knots. So, you know, we've gone from... Another sea joke. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and at rate of, I mean, they're coming thick and fast. I, I mean, uh, you are a dad, so they got to come thick and yeah, fast. Yeah, 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 rate of knots. And um, so, um, yeah, we had to, uh, you know, drop anchor, anchor and reevaluate the situation. We had to look to the horizon. And, oh, um, no. No, enough. Um, we, so, yeah, I mean, look, normally we have about... 20 odd people working you know in the uk and in the office mm. and, and i think we're up to literally 40 odd staff as we're, yeah. we're 30 odd staff as we are packing and boxing and everybody's taking boxes home to pack them at home over the weekends and everything just just to get ready to ship and we we hoped to be in store this weekend uh, and i think we're going to miss it by about a week but we All will right. be shipping from the end of this week we will be shipping um and then throughout next week probably early into the first week of December to get it all out. But, um, you know, considering the, the headwinds we've had, uh, you know, the team's done a remarkable, remarkable job. Um, give you some idea of the context of that. When I did my first forecast, I thought we were going to need about 60,000 resin pieces. We, 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 we're, going, we're going to have needed 190,000. Oh, my Lord. And we're at 110,000, and we had none four weeks ago. Wow. So you know, we're doing 5,000 a day, 6, 30,000 a week. Um, you know, it, it's been a real challenge, and everyone's worked phenomenally hard and done an incredible job to even get close to this. There was a point that if we hadn't got the machine working, it would have been January. So it's a, a real testament to everyone's efforts and commitments that, that we're even close to delivering. Uh, every time I went in the office, there was just more and more stuff and people running around. So it was, uh, it, was yeah. it was like a different different company every time I walked in. Uh, yeah. To go and bother people for resin. So now I just feel terrible. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, don't worry. Yeah, don't worry about it. We've, we've got 110,000 pieces. So the, the 10 or 15 you needed is is a rounding error. Uh, not even. It's, yeah. Um, you know, uh, yeah, it's it, it just the, the, the size. Of, you know, we it's something we would have looked, you know, we would have normally planned for, we started this over a year ago, but mm. we, if we'd known it was this big, we wouldn't have been promising it until April or May, if we yeah. didn't deliver it with our normal, with our normal infrastructure. Mm. And it was just a combination of a, you know, a bit of good luck, yeah. a beautiful product, a well-designed product, um, something that felt very fresh, that, that really has caught the imagination and, you know, the team have responded to it. So it's very good. Oh, so in, obviously in terms of like post post launch because what what i like seeing is every time we launch a product is like say with the basilians when when we launch the vanguard units like people there's always people's paint schemes that are completely different and oh, that's yeah. what that's what i'm always excited for when when we launch a new product so i was gonna ask you what what you're most excited for post launch is it the tournaments is it seeing people's fleets is it well no for me it's always i mean you know my primary driver is always the aesthetics, you know, the visuals. Mm. I mean, I think there will be, you know, lots of great gameplay. It's been well tested. Uh, I think it was built in um, and play tested online mm. um, from, from a big group of play testers. But for me, it's the, the prettiness of the, the toy soldiers. You yeah. know, as I, I mean, if it, I'll talk about my own, you know, where, I, where I've taken my Basilians, Basilians. Yeah. You say uh, tomato, I say tomato. Yeah. Um, 
which are my pre-dwarves. My dwarves are going to paint them the same colours as my dwarven army, the green and blue. Mm. So they're going to be kind of tied to my, my general, which is fun. But the Basileans, I was madly... I couldn't decide what to do with them. And what was that? I was looking online, and the, even just the Pathfinders that were getting some demo copies to kind of take out to the stores and show off yeah. were looking great. And then Martin Thurwell <laughs> did his kind of Night Stalker-inspired kind of crazy ones. But the sales on his were just fantastic. The way he'd got a real depth and a real colour to them. And he told me they'd done, he'd done them through oil. Yeah. But you should definitely, whenever you post a podcast, you know, stick a link up to the to the blog where we're, we're putting up the photographs. Yeah. But there's some fantastic paint jobs. His was there. So I was feeling a little bit deflated because I knew I was going to spray my <laughs> black and dry brush. And they were going to look a little bit naff by comparison. So then, and then in the end, I've been actually picking up my stuff from the miscast pile. Yeah. And um, one of them had quite a bad miscast. And I thought, I'm just going to damage that one up. And instantly Ooh. I did that. I went, that's the way I'm taking the fleet. I'm going to do it like. And I've seen some pictures from back in the day when I was doing my mm. history too. Like when ships came out of a battle at the end of Trafalgar, they were in pieces. Oh, yeah. 100%. The winner. You know, the winners were there was hundreds of bullet holes shot through their sails. And you, then you've taken just loads of rigging would have been shot out. There'd be, you know, um, uh, cannonballs buried in the deck and smashed up. The winners looked like they'd been 15 <laughs> rounds with Mike Tyson. And, you know, the, the losers were on fire and sunk. Yeah. So it was a brutal old scrap. And so I thought, you know what, actually, that would be good fun. Because, because they go on the base, it's still going to be the right footprint. It's still going to be the right size. That's true. So everyone can see which ship it is. But mine are going to look like they've been, you know, um, in, in a fighting cage with Colin McGregor. for Not Colin McGregor. <laughs> uh, you know, <laughs> Colin McGregor for a bit. So that I just smashed, you know, clipped them away and did a lot mm. of damage to them. And it was good fun. So the aesthetics, I think, are going to look fantastic. And I think some of the paint jobs, because they're all resin. So yeah. the detail that's on the model, on the master model, is on the model. Mm. And the little cannons, they're just gorgeous. And, you know, we might even make some STLs available so people can download and print some more cannons and, you know, masts and things like that so that um, they can they can have some fun you know, yeah, uni know, uniquing their own ships and having some fun with them. So really excited to get visually it's going to look lovely. And, and then I've seen a lot of people also building their terrain. Yeah, I was, I was um, wondering how people are going to do it. Cause obviously the ones that we've been using uh, just in house for play testing have just been the, is it the acrylic base, like pretty, pretty standard. But then I like said with Martins as well, like it, it, it shows what you, what just you can do like turbulent waves and and things yeah. like that yeah so uh, he's taken the mdf and then he's kind of painted them up detailed mm. them up and then he's put that you know um clear resin over the top so it really looks like choppy weather and choppy um waves which yeah. is, makes it part of the, the kit i'm going to use the um the acrylic templates we've done which is actually two pieces of acrylic mm. with a picture that's on the mat stuck in between them all oh, so right they match, they match perfectly and I, and I think these are one of the things that at the moment everyone's got mdf in your sets but unless mm. you're going to really model up your mdf i think the lazy man's approach is going to be you, these um, acrylic ones that we've got so yeah. I, I suggest if anyone's listening and is, is thinking that go have a look because they're going to sell out very very quickly because i think everyone i i'm just going to chuck my mdf bases and glue them onto these because you measure everything from the base, so it's exact. You know, you're turning cycles yeah. and all that. But these just match the map perfectly. They look very pretty, and they set your models off very nicely. So, um, I think they're gonna they're gonna be very popular. No, I'm, um, I'm always I'm always excited to see the techniques because there's things people just you never think of, and it's like, wait, what? What have you used? <laughs> yeah. And and some uh, of the guys, some of our modeling guys, are now just going to go to absolute town on these, and I think you know Martins will be a, a starting point. But I, I, I can't wait to see where it's going to go. Yeah, and so then the I, other thing that's nice that I've already just seen happening, and I, I actually um, was was the the battlefield itself, mm. because obviously in the game you get some card which do your harbour and your sandbanks and some rocks and things yeah. which you sail around, but very quickly people have been um, just using their modelling skills to make to make those in three D. Yeah, and actually Shane Nurl. 
uh, had, had done a load and he'd used some of our terrain crate pieces just out the walls, just as little castles. And I obviously tapped him up and I said, right, I need these. <laughs> so I bribed him <laughs> and he sent me them over, um, which was fantastic. So he's, um, so we've got some of that stuff, but that's really nice as well because suddenly you've got these lovely ships, you've got a lovely gaming table, but in terms of commitment, two weeks and you're, you know, you've got something that looks absolutely knockout. We've yeah. got the deluxe mats, throw that down, throw a few sandbanks and a few hills that you've made, um, little islands, mm. and you'll be paint your fleet up and you'll be playing on the nicest gaming table you can imagine for not a lot of money and not a lot of time Whereas, no, exactly. you know, get, getting a good looking war games table it can both be expensive in time and money and mm. then of course the prettier it looks the harder it is to play on yeah you've got trees everywhere and everything else so <laughs> there is a real congruence of this between looking good and playing good yeah it kind, of, it kind of goes both ways as well, doesn't it? Because cause we've got the cardboard as well. Like You can just get stuck in if you just want to start Straight away, playing. paper mat, cardboard yeah. out. Uh, Done. An hour, an hour of gluing mm. and you're playing. Yeah. Um, and just don't crash into the islands, people. <laughs> yeah, just, uh, as, a, as a thing, it, yeah. that hurts. Yeah, <laughs> no matter how flat they, they are. Plan. And you think, <laughs> well, why on earth would I do that? And then someone starts shooting at you. You twist this to... <laughs> Before you know it, you realise you're not going to quite make that corner. Yeah. <laughs> Captain of the Titanic. Ah. If Shucks. there's anything I'm good at, it's not uh, not planning ahead when I play. So <laughs> that will probably be me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I, can, I, I get all my instructions wrong every time. I'm totally thinking about not hitting the island while I realise that I'm sailing directly towards and going to hit the island. <laughs> so, I mean, it must be a stupid question to ask what your favourite fleet is. So I guess, I guess I'll rephrase it. Uh, why do you love the dwarf so much uh, in, yeah. uh, in Armada? <laughs> well, interestingly, I am I am slightly tall on this one oh. because um, I've gone to the dwarfs just because, well, the dwarfs, they're out. And, yeah. you know, I've got my other army and, you know, but but the commitments are low. Like I said, <clears throat> I plowed into the Basileans and... Um, Obviously, can't do green skins because the dwarves hate the green skins. But the Empire of Dust is a very, very, very pretty looking army. Oh, yeah. Um, these days, I don't enjoy painting. I mean, as a kid, I used to love the painting and hate the kind of gluing together and mm. assembly and basing. And I'm, and I'm almost entirely the reverse now. I love gluing together and, and, and modeling up and basing and everything. And then, you know, I, I start losing interest after I've undercoated them. And maybe it's because my painting you... skills are just a bit crap these days. I don't know what it is. But I say, why do you think it's reversed? Yeah, I don't know. Get old. Yeah. I don't, know. <laughs> uh, don't know what it is, but I love the creating bit and the. So I could see myself kind of building quite a lot of the fleets mm. actually, um, because they're just so nice. And actually, the dwarf one is probably the easiest to build yeah. because they're you know they're heavily armored and it, it, it's just adding a few turrets. Whereas I think the modeling opportunities on the other three are greater and particularly mm. the Basileans that I think have the, on the orcs where you've got lots of opportunity to just give them that unique twist, you know, yeah. just adding some bits and moving things around a little bit. And, um, yeah. No, I think I'm, I think I'm the same trying to, when I'm, when I'm sculpting, cause you usually get like, you have, you have your, your bits box uh, and then it'll be, Oh, what can I what can I slap on this? <laughs> yeah, exactly. what can I just add on? And I think yeah, Vanguard did some of that where you were getting a single figure, but you were looking, well, I can just put an extra sword on him or a, yeah. an extra weapon from the bits box. Um, and you do it, I think, in Kings of War more at uh, regiment level. You know, mm. I look at the whole base and I won't do much to a single figure, but well, I can put a dead figure into this base here. I can put some stones on it and put a dog up there. Um, you know, you see people putting defenses and the zombies kind of plowing through the fence. So I think yeah. you. You know, you kind of unique up your regiments. Um, but I think you're going to get a chance to do that with the boats here. Mm. Um, and, and of course, that quite sits quite nice with the gameplay because you can actually upgrade your ships. Um, yeah. There's kind of, there's there's generic upgrades. And, but an upgrade, it's, you know, it, it, it's an ability to, um, I've got the dwarf ones. I have to have the dwarf fleet in front of me. Flame yeah. Belcher. If this ship inflicts damage with a shooting attack from a front or rear weapon, roll a d6. On a 4+, plus, a fire is started on the target. Place <laughs> a plates marker on it. So you can actually pick some of your guns. And, right, it's not. this isn't a cannon, it's a flame belcher. It's firing yeah. a flame shot. 
And I know it's lovely because then next to your ship, you actually can take a little flame belcher um, mm. archer and put it down, and it just reminds you that that has that skill. Yeah. And so you each ship, you can have two furies you know, in your fleet, but the one that's marked up with the flame belcher is the one that's got the upgrade. You know, orcs have got more axe, and, you know, the Basilean's have got blessings. So there's mm. both generic upgrades uh, that every fleet can use. You get those in the core game. And magical upgrades and then there's uh, you know race specific ones so the basileans have kind of basilean upgrades that are you know about healing and about yeah you know, being righteous fury the dwarfs you know flame belchers um advanced construction so more sturdy assault vessel accurate ordnance and um, so they've got iron watch marines so you can actually be better at boarding so you'll pick your fleets and then you can unique you say well actually i've got two of the same boats Mm. But this one is the one that sits back and shoots up, yeah. while that's the one that goes in and does the boarding. And so um, I love the fact, and then you know you could you can reflect that a little bit in your in the build. You can you know just tweak the build a little bit to this one's going to have some extra cannons on it. It's going to have the extra um, you know the the, the fame belcher. All right, I'm going to get a little cannon and let's see if I can stick another one of those on it, or <laughs> we'll just make a point out of the out of that or give it a bigger barrel or something you know you can have a little mm. bit of modeling fun if your skills are up to it yeah it reminds me a bit of um how how people made their their, their vanguard and dead zone things like if it was a certain unit they wanted to be a bit more like they had a certain weapon it would it would have that weapon then you could just look at the board and go okay that's my that's my big shooty boy like yeah exactly you know, um you're not having to remember that's which the one, one i is. spent a bit more time on that's that that's that character mm. And I'm uh, the 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 one thing I'm most excited for, and this is more of a challenge when the Empire of Dust come out, uh, is uh, I can't remember the name, and it's mainly because the Empire of Dust have such unique names. But the one that that can come out of the ocean, uh, Davy Jones style, I'm yeah. waiting for I'm waiting for someone either diorama level or yeah. actual tabletop level to do something with that half yeah. coming out the ocean. Because I bet, I mean. Well, we might do some bags of miscasts, Ooh, and I could yeah. just see some people really getting hold of those, and you know, yeah. do a bag of a tenner, and you can get what you get out of it. But you can imagine, you know, that cut in half and like kind of popping out of the water, oh, yeah. like it's it's coming up or something like that would be great. Or quite the reverse, as they're taking damage, I can see people like smashing them up and then having them half sinking and listing into the water. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, get, I think there's just such great modelling opportunities, and these are slightly bigger ships than I think any previous fantasy naval games have had mm. um, and that adds so much to the character and that's because we could work in resin in the past it was always kind of metal so back yeah. in the man of war days they were metal because they just couldn't have them this big mm. uh, because it wouldn't have cast um, whereas now with the resin you you really can have those beautiful big pieces and they just look delicious just gorgeous yeah, they maintain the detail even at scale um, yeah absolutely so and some nutters trying to decide a, some single figures to add to his crew. Like, oh yeah, I don't quite know what scale is one seven hundred or something. So it's like, uh, good luck with that. <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure we'll see. I'm sure there'll be some brilliant modellers who will have uh, each of the cannons crewed and barrels on the decks, and goodness knows where they'll take. Oh it. yeah, there'll be some. Well, as uh, we mentioned, three D three D printers. Well, I know we've got people <laughs> at the office that are, that are going mad three D printing wise. So um, yes, and it's it's completely. You, you think, you know, we think the mad ones are the ones that are going to add, you know, some tiny little figures to it. It's not. The really mad one is the salesman, Clive Stone, who decided <laughs> to get the files and print them at 28 mil. <laughs> so we now have in the office two of the ships, uh, just the small ones, the sloop, but then yeah. one of the yeah. um, ships of the line. And it, it, it is the Aloe, uh, mm. which is only a medium ship, not even the Abbess, uh, filling up his desk <laughs> at the moment. <laughs> And yeah, it, when it I... looks like it's made out of marshmallows. It's in brown and pink. <laughs> yeah. It must, when be I... about, it must be about five tubs of 3D printing material just to, to get those. So <laughs> look out for those. But, you know, just in case you think we're, you know, we're not all mad. Yeah. One yeah. of the staff has actually printed them out at 28 mil. You have to be a little yeah. bit mad to, to work yeah. at Mantic. Exactly. Yeah. You don't have to be uh, mad, but it helps. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. When I first saw the picture... Yeah. I didn't realise the scale he'd done it as. <laughs> and then I think I saw a zoomed out one. I was like, oh my God, okay. <laughs> when you when you see an extra figure. You think, and that's where, you know, Vanguard, I think we're going to write some Vanguard stories 
Mm. Um, like playing a battle on a deck. Yeah. Going onto the deck and stealing the captain's plans and some of those other things. So if we, we might do a summer book for um, Armada next year, and on it, we'll, we'll, but we'll actually put, you know, here's how it could affect your campaign, you know, the sea battles, and then you can be shipping in supplies. And if you lose that battle, you don't get the supplies. And similarly, what's going on with the, um, you know, with your other, um, uh, you can play, you know, here's a vanguard scenario. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or two or three vanguard scenarios set around the docks, set around boarding actions, uh, which I think would all be good fun and some, again, great modelling opportunities for your for your Basile and Vanguard faction. Mm, yeah, because we had people asking if there was going to be integration. So I guess that, that links into the the future for Armada. And uh, if, if anyone else misses this, I know on the Mantic Virtual Open Day, which is uh, this Saturday at 10 o'clock. Oh, yeah, comes up uh, GMT. <laughs> Coming to YouTube, uh, if you head to the Facebook, the link's there, but it'll be going live at 10 o'clock. There's also a, we'll be doing a section on future Armada uh, content, but is there any, I mean, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be bringing you on to, onto this without trying to squeeze some secrets out of you. Um, but the, what would you want from Armada going forward? Uh, I mean, I, I, firstly, let's just get let's get the the supply side sorted out mm. you know i think we've just got to make sure that we everyone that wants to get their hands on the copy of the game can do that yeah that's um january we've got a reprint coming back in it's the fastest we can get it turned around and we're going to need time for casting so you can at the moment on our website buy the book dice I mean, the book doesn't just come as a book it does also have the uh, card inserts with it so all the tokens come with it and everything so it, it's a nice product um and the fleet you can buy the orc fleet or the basilean fleet mm. um but we have no more of the two player set your friendly local game store might have but if you are getting excited about this and want it i would strongly recommend you phone them today or go online today and find out because it's been selling very very well yeah um but you know as soon as we've got through this production um we'll scale back ever so slightly because the guys can't keep working six days a week and we're doing double shifts from 6 a.m mm. you know, two different shifts but from six till ten the casting machine is working six in the morning till ten at night um just to make sure that we can we can kind of replenish in jan and make sure that we've then got enough for the jan feb march as people are seeing it and getting excited about it and want to participate you know, first, we've got to make sure they get looked after. But then, of course, the, the dwarfs are coming out alongside that in January. So you've got a new fleet. So just when you've got used to killing the orcs or the Basileans, <laughs> depending which side you are, the dwarfs will come along and beat you both. You're going to see the best. Um, March, we're going to see the Empire of Dust. Um so that's lovely. And then roughly every two months, we're going to have an Armada release throughout next year. So you're going to get six across the year. Jan, March for the Empire of Dust. April, May will be the four XL ships, one for each of the current fleets. Ooh. That's just a real, gives you another meta level. You've got used to playing with your basic uh, ships, you know, and you've got all that fluidity. You know the rules, you're playing it. Right, here's something a little bit bigger that can change it up. How do you now take out, you know, mm. a super heavily armoured hundred point ship? Um, and then I think, you know, that's that's kind of the end of wave one. And then yeah. June we'll be looking at possibly a wave two anchored by a book. Um and see what, you know, goes flying around there and um and some more races and some more fleets to come out. So exciting times. So I'm really hoping that we can, you know, build a kind of good good growing crowd in the early part of the year. I don't know if yeah. we'll be able to get out to shows and demo it or not. I mean, obviously we'd be taking it to salute and we'd be taking it to, um, Adepticon. Mm. Were we allowed to, we would have probably had it at Essen. Was that going to happen? But, um, you know, we just don't know what's happening there. So we'd have to, you know, wait and see what the governments say and what the restrictions are. But, you know, fingers crossed that April, May, we might have it out at the shows. You then have four fleets to choose from. Um, you know, I think they look beautiful and I can see them still being very, very popular then for those beginner fleets. And then we can expand it out once we've got a good customer base, you know, a good hobby base 
growing it. No, definitely. Well, I mean, uh, obviously the popularity kind of speaks for itself, so uh, and I can't wait to see what people bring out. Um, but definitely a lot of stuff to look forward to. Um, especially, I know people are really excited for Empire of Dust as well. Yeah, um, this is beautiful. Really different. And it's a great way, like with Vanguard, it was a great way for us to look at a new faction. Mm. And so we looked at, you know, in Vanguard, we looked at the Northern Alliance, we looked at the Night Stalkers, um, and those went from, you know, Matt's pipe dreams or nightmares, depending which uh, what you think <laughs> Matt, Mr. Gilbert Brain. Um, and they came out hugely popular. Now they're Kings of War armies. We've got the Frost Giant. You know, there's so much happening with those. Um, the Night Stalkers is a key army and kind of a big piece of the jigsaw. And so, you know, the Empire of Dust, we talked about it for ages. Um, and while we've got some metal conversions, it's not an army that we feel like we've really really done mm. you know we've got to get you by army it's good fun but it's not fully mantic stamped but of course this was a great way of, of really doing something that's no, never been done before and, yeah. and we've done it and i think it looks amazing no definitely so i mean I'll obviously keep keep tuned to uh the youtube and facebook for all the all the future um yeah. updates and um thank you very much for joining me i'm just gonna plug one more time, the Mantic Virtual Open Day. Um, so it's November 21st at 10 o'clock uh, UK time. Uh, and if you head over to the Facebook, there is a, a timetable that is very loose, I imagine, <laughs> depending on uh, if, if, we, if we stick to that time schedule. Uh, so the 10 o'clock is the sci-fi update and welcome. Uh, 11 o'clock join in for a live miniature sculpture which is always good uh they're absolutely amazing <laughs> uh 1 p.m is kings of war and vanguard 2 p.m is winged hussar interview 3 p.m as uh, i just said is the armada in 2021 so uh, i guess if you miss this you're not gonna be out of luck you're gonna know all the goodies that are coming out and 4 p.m it wouldn't be a mantic open day without the ronnie q a they didn't call it the Ronnie Spoiler Fest 2020, so I'll have to have that changed. Um, yeah. yeah, I will uh, be as good as gold, I'll say. Almost definitely <laughs> nothing can be wrong. <laughs> this is a recorded interview, by the way, so we've got that on record. Um, and that, that'll be on the uh, Mantic YouTube channel, so if you're not already subscribed, uh, what are you doing with your life? Uh, so get, get subscribed so you know as soon as it comes out, you'll get a notification uh, and all the updates regarding Armada. Uh, so exciting things. Again, thank you so much for joining me, Ronnie. It's my pleasure. It's always great to chat. And, and uh, I hope everyone's enjoyed what we're chattering about. And um, for those gluttons for punishment, <laughs> love the pain, can't get enough of it. I will see you all online on Saturday at four o'clock. <laughs> I will see you then. And uh, keep tuned to the YouTube channel for all things semantic. Have a nice day.